Today we're going to talk about how to migrate your website from WordPress to Next.js. Welcome to DevWorld, my name is Sam and around three weeks ago I got this email from my host Bluehost saying that my old website will have to be renewed. So this is a website of an old business I had, now it's pretty much just a blog uh, because we took out all of the services and I thought about should I actually keep the site and I decided you know what I try an experiment I try to migrate from WordPress to Next.js. One of the bigger reasons also why I wanted to do this experiment is to check out if I can increase the speed index of Google and the SEO implications so if I actually get more traffic at the end of the day because of it. So now the current website has around 40 points on desktop with around five six seconds of loading time and mobile is even worse and I hope with the new website I can increase that a lot. My goal is of course to reach uh, 100 on desktop and maybe something around 80 on mobile. So that's why today I'm going to talk about how, why you should change how you can change to make it seamless, then also some caveats you have to know, and then the recommendation of my personal recommendation who should actually consider changing from WordPress to Next.js. So first of all, let's talk about why you should move. So my reason was I didn't want to, so I didn't like my hosting company at all. I'm not too big of a fan of WordPress in the year 2021. So that's why I wanted to change. Also another reason you might want to change is because you can make it. So if it's just a little blog on a little website with WordPress, you have to pay for the hosting and everything. And with a Next.js uh, Stack website, you can make it actually for free. Then another reason you might want to move is if you want to have a very, very speedy website, mostly for SEO purposes. Uh, and then the other thing, of course, is if you hand code your website, you're free to do whatever you want. You don't have dependencies like you would have with WordPress, but you're very dependent on the platform itself and on different plugins. So how did I start with the website change? So first of all, in on WordPress, you have the code for your website. So your design, let's say and your content management system, so your CMS in one platform. If you're gonna go with the Jamstack solution, so with Next, you also need a content management system on the other side, which will provide the Next.js application with the data. So that's the, the first thing I did. I tried to find a replacement for WordPress, so the CMS, and I already knew Contentful, for example, which is a so-called headless CMS, but it was a little bit too much just for a simple blog. Um, so I found Prismic and Cosmic, which interested me and I decided to go with Cosmic uh, because with Prismic I've seen that data import, so I wanted to make it as easy as possible to import data from WordPress to my new CMS. So you can only, if I've seen it correctly, um, with the paid plan you can only import data to Prismic and also Cosmic, which was the solution I uh, decided to go with also had a WordPress uh, migration plugin, which I hoped make, uh, makes it seamless to integrate the data from WordPress to, um, to my new CMS, so Cosmic. Then I actually uh, made an account on Cosmic. It's very, very easy going. It's a very uh, organized platform. I downloaded the plugin there and um, I was able to migrate the data from WordPress to, through my RSS feed into um, Cosmic itself. So I had the data in there more or less seam, uh, seamlessly. Um, after that, I of course had to go and write the code. So one of the things I started with, uh, one of the things I do when I uh, have a new project, I always go, if it's a Next.js project, I always go to the Next.js repository. They have an examples folder and in that examples folder, I search for Cosmic. And would you know, uh, they had a template already there. So I really recommend going on um, for many different reasons to the Next.js repo examples. You can find almost everything you need in there for a little boilerplate. So I uh, forked the boilerplate and it was very, very easy. So I didn't have to think about how to connect the database that was already set up in that boilerplate. So then, of course, I started to code, so I had to do some things. I migrated from JavaScript, so I deleted all the JavaScript files or renamed them to TypeScript, installed TypeScript, did some other things, uh, deleted some packages that I didn't use, and that was pretty much it. And I was up and running after, uh, yeah. And then, of course, uh, the, the groundwork came with uh, 
uh, building the, the components and the sections in my Next.js application with code that I previously had on my WordPress website. So now my stack contains Next.js, TypeScript, Tailwind as a CSS library, SendGrid for the contact form. So that's uh, where you uh, can connect the contact form to send you an email. Then MailChimp for this uh, newsletter sign up, Vercel for the deployment, and then of course Cosmic for the CMS. So what were some things I learned along the way? Uh, I want to give you some kind of detail tips uh, that I encountered, which took me a lot of time to figure out, which I hope uh, this video helps you so you can make it in, a, a, in way less time than I did. But first of all, I had a backup uh, or a migration issue with the uh, plugin from Cosmic. So for some reason, Cosmic, when I uh, executed the plugin or um, yes, with the RSS feed, it said the, the migration or the import was not possible. There was an error or something like that. And after a while, I found out that just this message was the error and the actual import worked uh, before. So that took me around 30 minutes to find out uh, by coincidence that it actually worked, even though it said it didn't work. So that was one thing. Then the other thing is the import was not seamless. Uh, so I had to restructure a little bit the data. So what I did is I exported all of the data to a JSON, which is very, very easy with Cosmic. Then I ran a little JavaScript function that uh, reordered some of the, the entities. And then I easily just exported that into a new um, JSON file and imported that again to Cosmic. So that's how I uh, cleaned kind of the code that I already had there. Um, also with um, the CMS, how you actually put in the content, I had to do some style adjustments. So for example, the videos were not 16 to nine, for example, so I had to do a workaround there and the images didn't span all the way in the blog. So I had to put a, a width of 100% in there. So just uh, simple things like that, but it was not really too big of an issue. And then one thing I didn't consider um, is just the time that it took me to actually code the different components. So this website is not at all complex, um, but it's still like coding just requires time. And this is a, a, certainly a thing I underestimated, which maybe in the future I would do differently. So um, how you could save time is, for example, with something like DiffJoy. If you don't know what DiffJoy is, it will be in one of those corners. I did a video about that comparing normal code with DiffJoy code. And another, if I didn't want to use DiffJoy, most probably a, a smart solution would have been to use a CSS or component library instead of just a CSS library like Tailwind which is very performant, of course, but just takes a long time to develop because you cannot just bring in different components that somebody already uh, wrote. So that's surely my takeaway. So the migration wasn't seamlessly and code just takes time, especially if you don't use a CSS component library. Then I want to get to the summary here. Um, one or two things that really stood out is Vercel. So the deployment was seamless. It was really easy going. Of course, that's the platform that actually develops next. So, but I'm, I'm just amazed how easy uh, it was to actually deploy the next application there. It was yeah a couple of clicks and that was pretty much it. The same thing with Cosmic, I think is a very uh, well built uh, CMS, especially for a small block like mine. Um, and yeah, it, I think it's just very, very organized and I'm very happy with the choice I made there. Then the bad thing again is it just took a long time. If I would have built the, the same website again with something like WordPress and Elementor or something like Squarespace, like I would have finished the website in one or two days max and we code it just takes hours and hours on end to actually code that. Um, yes, this was this, let's say the summary of, of my experience with migrating from WordPress to um, Next.js. So now I want to talk about the recommendations. So what do I think who should actually migrate from WordPress to Next.js to the Jamstack? Um, so first of all, I would only do it if you're experienced with code. So you have to be on an intermediate level in coding. So it takes some things, especially with the connection to the CMS that you just have to know, otherwise you will lose a lot of time researching. 
um, then I think it makes more sense if it's actually a serious project. So because it requires so much time, it has to be justified. Um, so it would really make, if, if it's just a little blog on the side, rather use something like Wix uh, because yeah, you're up in one day instead of having to code out everything by hand. Um, then another thing is if your website focuses really, really on speed, especially connected with SEO. So the more, the faster your website is, the better it is for SEO and the more people you can bring into your blog, website, whatever. Uh, that makes sense to, to use Next.js over WordPress because you have way more flexibility and way more control over the aspects of the website that make it speedy with WordPress. You are bound to the, to the platform itself and especially to many, many different plugins, which you don't really have the control over. Uh, and it's of course with Next.js is less bloated as with WordPress. Um, other than that, you just have to be careful a little bit with the SEO implementations and do a thorough testing at the end of the day that everything will work SEO friendly so that the title tags and the description, and the metadata and the structured data is in the right order. And yeah, pretty much it was a, a more or less seamless transition. Um, I'm now very, very curious to see because I purposely didn't change the design or the, 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 or the website in general. Now it's just way, way faster than it was before. So here you can see the speed comparison. Before the website was around in, in the 30s if you tested it. And now on desktop it's 99 sometimes. And on mobile around the 60s, 70s. So it's very, very good. Um, you could easily optimize it even further now in Next.js, which I'm most probably going to do over the next couple of weeks. But I will um, keep you updated how the impact is of this, just the performance change, if I actually see some increase in SEO traffic or not. So make sure if you don't want to miss that to subscribe to the channel. Um, but yeah, it was a really interesting project. I'm more, in, more uh, interested now to see the actual results. Maybe in a couple of months I will know more if it actually um, increased the SEO performance. But yeah, in, that was pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions about your migrations, just leave them in the, con uh, in the comment section down below. If that video helped you, please leave it a like. And as I said, if you want to see more videos like that, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.